Guys, welcome to this edition of Wednesday Morning Streams. As you've seen for the last 10 minutes, a, a lot of bites and pieces of what the Lord has done in the movie theaters a few days ago on Monday night. We've seen a lot of you guys sharing testimonies in the comments section pretty much and all the demon slayers and so today is a very special stream we are we are going to bring some people into the zoom who will share their testimony so if you're one of those people who actually were in the movie theater and you experienced deliverance go to pastorvlad.org forward slash zoom and we will bring you on after um short interview with Pastor Greg and you will be able to share your testimony. So we just very much appreciate it. Guys, before we go any further, would you help us out and hit thumbs up to this video where you're watching. Click share right now. Share on your Facebook group pages. Some of you have like 200 group pages that you belong to. So go ahead and share to all of those 200 groups. Uh, share it on Telegram, WhatsApp, Viber. Uh, share it to your church group everywhere because I believe that today's testimonies are going to inspire you and you're going to be encouraged. If you are a pastor or a leader and you're watching this, um, I really want you to consider taking your church and taking your whole ministry team and expose them to the ministry of deliverance by taking them to a movie theater on April 10th and 11th which is Monday night and Tuesday night and when you go there you will meet a lot of people who actually don't even probably go to church and people who are hungry for deliverance and people who will come to you and ask you actually to lead them to the Lord. Uh, me and my wife went to the local theater, which was an hour away, met a local sheriff there asking for deliverance, met a Baptist pastor there asking for deliver, asking for prayer. And so, so many people will not come to our churches and our conferences, but they will go to a movie theater and it becomes a really good place where we can all experience and expose people to this ministry, crazy ministry, wild ministry but not weird ministry of deliverance. So uh, without further ado, I would like to bring our guest, uh, Pastor Greg. Hello. Hello, my friend. Pastor Greg, it is a pleasure to uh, have you on the stream. It was a pleasure to meet you last year at your deliverance conference. I've watched you for, um, during COVID especially because of your very bold stance on churches not closing down. So I saw your videos on TikTok and my mom also is a very big fan. And uh, <laughs> so a lot of your videos that you would do at Target and do at other places were really emboldening us because we also stayed opened um, during the pandemic in Washington State which is pretty liberal mm. uh, state yeah. so that was very encouraging. And then to my shock I saw how you started to uh, talk about, because I saw your you know stance on the cultural issues, they were very bold and very strong, but then you start talking about deliverance and then my friends started to text and say, hey did you guys know Greg Locke is reaching out and uh, he's doing deliverance and um, then when I had you reach out to me and then we had a chance to actually go and meet and seeing your heart and seeing what the Lord is doing was incredible, it was moving. And um, let's start from the beginning. I know most people already maybe have heard but those who have not who will be re-watching, how did you get introduced to the ministry of deliverance? Well, it's interesting Pastor Vlad, the first time I was introduced to it, you know, through you guys, even online watching videos, I thought it was crazy. You know, I thought it was too weird, too wild. I was a super cessationist, very independent, fundamental Baptist, right? I was in my ways, very conservative. And, you know, we were a contemporary church, but we were not at all a charismatic church in any sense of the word for a long time. And we began to move about three years ago, three and a half years ago into more of a five-fold ministry, but that was still very foreign to me, very foreign. And so once we really just started opening our eyes theologically and saying, look, Holy Spirit, take off the denominational lens, teach us your word without any interference from man or manipulated hierarchy denominationally, and God began to do it. And so God began to allow things to happen in our church services that I had preached against for many, many years. And then of course that, uh, faithful and fateful day when the young girl in the baptistry manifested a full-blown cat. I'm thinking to myself, to me, she seemed like she was 10 foot tall and bulletproof. And I'm like, what is going on? I knew it was a demonic manifestation, mm -hmm. but I was immediately dismissing that in my mind and hoping that nobody else saw it on the live stream. But clearly they did. And clearly it's why the Lord has put out a movie and why we are now connected and all the other demon slayers and now why we are doing our best by the grace of God mm -hmm. to bring deliverance ma mainstream. It happened in that one instant. It was a moment that radically changed our life. 
And interestingly enough, outside of salvation, this is a big theological statement that I'm mm -hmm. about to make, but I want people to understand this. Outside of the salvation, the gospel of Jesus Christ, there is nothing that has ever changed me more than deliverance ministry. Wow. Nothing. It changed me theologically. It changed me as a husband, as a father, as a pastor. It changed my disposition a lot. See, I was never really wrong in my position. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I was wrong in my disposition, in the way that I would say things. And deliverance ministry tempered me. It gave me more love. It gave me more compassion because at the heart of all of it, and, mm -hmm. and I like what uh, Sister Jenny Weaver says, at the heart of all of it, deliverance ministry is about one thing, the love of the mm -hmm. Father. It's mm -hmm. about love, right? It can get weird. It can get wild, but it's mm -hmm. about love. Perfect mm -hmm. love casts out fear. Fear mm -hmm. has torment. You want to get demons out? Then absolutely cover people in the love of the Father, and they cannot handle that presence. Mm -hmm. And so it's baptized me in a fresh new love that I've never had. Our church is growing, right? It's not about the, the numbers and the numerics, mm -hmm. but the stats show that people are interested in this. We had 80,000 people in, a, in movie theaters all over America the other night because people are interested. And so this is becoming Christian contraband, right? The pastors are like, don't go see this movie. But their people went to see this movie and they're gonna go back April 10th, 11th, and however long it runs. Mm -hmm. And these pastors are gonna have to answer the hard questions. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we engaged in the ministry of Jesus? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to think about that just a year and a half ago, you've had this <laughs> incident in the baptistry. And now a year and a half later, you know, we have yeah. 80,000 people showing up to movie theaters and not only children but adults. I mean, we had a lot of children that came yeah. to the movie theater and I asked the parents and I said, you're okay with this, right? Because I'm like, you know what's going to happen? I was like, these kids yeah. are not leaving the same. They, they're going to be, mm -hmm. they're going to see deliverance and they better finish the popcorn because this will become the, the sanitizing, uh, you know, we, we have yeah. a, a sanitizing ministry in our church for the deliverance who are cleaning up all the vomit and everything. And so this is just incredible. But uh, Greg, how did you overcome that biggest hindrance that I think every single person who first gets exposed to the ministry of deliverance, who comes from not just a Baptist background, but who comes from a background of not seeing deliverance, and that's the issue that Christians cannot have a demon because they are possessed by the Holy Spirit. How did you wrestle with that and how did you overcome that hindrance? Did you have that hindrance in your mental stronghold? I did. I had it for many years because I would always preach. There's no way that demons can be afflicted or oppressed. And of course, we always use the unfortunate word possession, uh, which is an unfortunate translation. If we could get past that, as Derek Prince said, we'd be 95% on the way to victory and deliverance ministry. But everybody thinks possession, possession. So I had to get past that theologically in my mind. But here's where the maybe the switch when 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 it clicked in my mind. You know, God's like, look, Greg. I have given you such political favor and boldness. You have fought all of these people, Planned Parenthood. You fought, you know, every Republican, Democrat, every leftist. You've said all these things at Target, the, the alphabet community, all of that. And so God said, look, I've built you to not really care. I call it not giving two flips of a wooden nickel, right? To not really care what people think. And so God said, now, do you know the truth? Do you see the truth of deliverance ministry? And I'm like, yes, Lord, I do. Okay, then why can't you be as bold about a biblical issue that people are going to go crazy over as you are about a political uh -huh. issue? And so just uh -huh. get up, mm -hmm. risk everything, right? Mm -hmm. Risk it all. And I knew this was going to be the riskiest transition of ministry that I was ever going to be involved in. Anybody that's watching this or anybody in the in the Zoom chat right now, they know if you if you grow up in in certain churches, certain denominations, you can't even move the communion table without five deacons having to vote on it and going crazy, right? You can't change the color of the carpet in the nursery. Mm -hmm. Well, we've never had that culture in our church, and so I just got up I said, "Look, if you feel like you're going to have to leave because it's about to get wild, then you're going to have to leave." But I'm telling you, here's what the Bible says, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I took 45 straight sermons and just jumped into deliverance, mm -hmm. Sundays, Wednesdays, Bible study, small group, just completely baptized our church in deliverance ministry, and there was no going back. And once demons started manifesting in every service, I'm like, what are you going to do with that? Right? Mm -hmm. you going to leave them like that? Well, I left them that way for a long, long time, but we don't leave people like that anymore. So I just had to say, okay, if I can be so bold and risk my mm -hmm. neck mm -hmm. in that area, why not be bold and risk my neck in this area? And I'm telling you, it was the, if I can say it this way, it was the safest, safest bet I ever placed on the table. God said, all cards on the table, go for it right now. And then you guys jumped on board. I thought, there's no way these guys are going to hook up with me. I'm too controversial. I'm too political. And then all of a sudden, here we are. 
And we've built a team that has now built an army of deliverance workers all over America. That's so good. And you mentioned that in the movie that, and you mentioned that in your testimony, that your church was actually a lot more ready than you were. Yeah. That the moment you start preaching on deliverance, actually, and even though most of your congregation, they really rallied around you because of your bold stance against, yeah. against cultural, um, you know, woke, progressive, politically correct yep. issues. And so, and a lot of the people that came around your ministry were actually also from a very conservative Baptist background. Oh, yeah. Grounds. And so mm -hmm. there was not a lot of resistance in the in your church or even people who, in people who were following you. What what is right. the most who did you get the most resistance from when it comes to deliverance? That's an interesting question. I was just talking to my wife uh, in the bed last night before we went to sleep. I said it's it's interesting to me that now that the movie's out, my greatest critics, y'all's greatest critics, mm -hmm. the greatest critics of deliverance ministry, the ministry of Jesus, and especially this movie, come out in Jesus' name, it's not been witches, now they hate it, right? It's not been witches, Satanists, LGBT, or atheists. It's been Calvinists. It's been the reform community. They are the most critically biased, demeaning people on the planet right now about this movie, the, the reform crowd. And I I find that interesting, but look, I say, you know, could that demonic doctrine of Calvinism come out in Jesus' name, right? I've got some Reformed friends, but they have been the most scathing of anybody. They've been worse than the witches. They've been worse than the than the gay community. And that's that's sad to have to say that because, look, I mean, they're calling us false brethren, false mm -hmm. prophets, you know, fake shepherds, the whole deal. And I'm like, you realize this is the ministry of Jesus? You realize mm -hmm. this is the third of what Jesus did? Mm -hmm. And all we're doing is being like Jesus. So stop wearing shirts that ask the question, what would Jesus do? And read a Bible and start doing what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Because what Jesus did was cast out evil spirits. There is nothing more gospel central than seeing people set free. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand why they don't get it. And I know that's a that's a hard way to answer that. But really, the Reformed community and, and some Baptists, we've brought a lot of Baptists over, right? Mm -hmm. But the reform community has been just absolutely inviscerating us about That's this. That's crazy. That's actually very, very <laughs> interesting. I've met quite a few people in Texas and other places, even start people started to come to our church now because when they saw me at your deliverance conference yes. and they would follow you, uh, before your church got into deliverance and then they came on board with deliverance and so a lot of them were very receptive and very open but I do agree that a lot of the reformed yeah. there are some reformed people who believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and for them it's easier yeah. to swallow the manifestation of the Holy Spirit and I think that people are so ignorant nowadays especially who reject the ministry of deliverance because the culture is so demonized mm. I mean maybe 50 years ago in the United States when there was still prayer in schools when a marriage yeah. was between between a man and a woman when abortion was unthinkable and abortion was actually murdering a baby instead of a woman's choice. I could see where uh, resistance and hesitancy toward the supernatural where that could find its um, you know, place in the United States. Yeah. But today I'm thinking like, how could you reject <laughs> what is happening in our culture? I mean, Disney is propagating demonization. Yes. Every art, music is literally repackaging witchcraft so that it's more, it's easier to swallow for our generation. Almost every other person yeah. that comes to church has practiced witchcraft or is currently yeah. practicing some sort of witchcraft. And to just put a cross on that and to pretend that just because we had gotten saved, prayed the sinner's prayer, were born again, and now all the demons, all the curses yeah. have disappeared. I just think that it's such an ignorance. Even if those people yeah. have more degrees than a thermometer, it still doesn't yeah. change the fact that the reality of the Jesus' ministry and the reality right in front of us, people are suffering and people are hurting. I know that in the last year your church has done mass deliverances every single Sunday night, but every service deliverances take place. What are some of the sharp testimonies that come to your mind that you would say, I am so glad that I started to do deliverance? Not only because the Bible teaches us so, not only because of that incident that happened in a baptistry, but what are some of the fruit of deliverance that you've seen that you can share? Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't understand that they've been praying for a healing perhaps for a long time that they're never going to get because some people don't need healing. They need deliverance from a spirit of infirmity so they can be healed. And so we are literally seeing stage four cancer leave people. And I mean, they're getting medically cleared. People are getting out of wheelchairs. We have seen, you know, everybody went crazy when I made my, you know, my autism statement. And look, not everything's a demon. We get it. But tell that to the parents that have brought nonverbal children to our tent 
and gone home and can't stop talking. And we're watching people walk. We're watching people talk. We're watching lives be transformed. We're seeing the rewiring of brains on a regular basis. We just had week number 57, right? We're, we're not doing mass deliverance every month or every year. We're doing it every single Sunday night. And you would think, Pastor, that you know the crowds would stop. They're getting bigger every Sunday night. They just keep growing. People are coming to our church for one service. They don't even come there for Wednesday. Some of them aren't even there Sunday morning. They will go to their church Sunday morning, catch a flight or drive halfway across the country just to make our six o'clock mass deliverance service. And we get in there and we go deep. We worship, sing songs of deliverance. And I mean, you know, I had 30 minutes in the movie theater. We got two hours on Sunday night and that's just really getting going good. We dig deep, we break off curses, we renounce. And I mean, we repent. And that's the essence of deliverance mm -hmm. ministry. Submit to God, resist the devil. And the result is, he will flee from you. And we mm -hmm. do that. And we, we dig deep. We do what the, the, the generals of deliverance ministry used to call, you know, Bob Larson coming up by the roots. We get them up by the roots. Mm -hmm. And so we take a long time and people are showing up. Healings are happening. And look, and let me say this. You can understand this from a more charismatic spectrum. But coming from a guy that was nothing but B-A-P-T-I-S-C, -E, Baptist, right? All I ever heard was, you know, the gifts of the Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. People think that's crazy and hokey. But I'll tell you what deliverance did for me. I never even understood the concept of the baptism of the Holy Spirit until I went through deliverance. The very night I went through deliverance, the man, Henry Schaefer, that was in the movie, laid hands on me. And immediately I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of praying in the Spirit. And I had never done that, never tried to fake it till I make it, nothing. And none of that happened until that religious bondage came up and out of me. Oh, wow. And so, so I'm so telling you. After, so you received deliverance when uh, when Pastor Henry, he prayed for you. Yep. And when you experienced... Yeah, we brought him in to go recording take our in whole progress. staff to deliver. Yep. Uh -huh. And then after that, that's when you actually experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. First time ever. Man. <laughs> Through after deliverance. I had to get deliverance because I had been taught against it. Mm -hmm. And so I had to get that demonic doctrine. I had to get that religious spirit up and out of me. And when I did, it was that simple. And now one of the greatest things I do every day of my life is pray in the spirit. And I love that's, it. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. That's crazy. And you actually mentioned that in the, in the trailer that one of the biggest yep. demons that people yep. are facing is the spirit of religion. And you guys, I mean, yes. here's a testimony. Greg went through that deliverance himself. And right after that, he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes that spirit, religious spirit, is hindering us from the ability to receive yes. everything that God has for us. So deliverance is happening in your church. I mean, you're an online personality. So you're very active yeah. online. Um, where did the idea that we should take this on a big screen came from? <laughs> it was an idea. That's it. It wasn't even a whiteboard session. It was nothing. It was really right when we were having you for the first time at the National Deliverance Training Conference. And uh, I told Wayne and the guys, th there's a Netflix crew that's doing another show that's coming out in a couple of months. I think it's called Exorcism in America. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of one of the, 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 the main, you know, talents, main players in that. They're talking about our church and all. And I said, you know what? Why, why don't we try to do something? We're going to get good footage. We got great stuff going on at Lock Media. We got a great film crew. You know, let's let's hire a few extras and let's, you know, get some more cameras and more eyes in here and see what happens. And Wayne's like, let's go for it. So we pitched the idea to a couple of places. They're like, we love it. You know, send us some kind of little teaser. And we did. And we couldn't believe it that the secular community was like fighting over it. It's like putting blood in the water for sharks. And they're like, oh, we want it. We want it. And we literally, the the, the secret behind the movie you talk about God making a way when there is no way is from, from the first time I said, uh, let's see if we can throw it to a movie theater. We had no film. You hadn't been there yet. We had nothing. From the moment I said that to the moment it showed up in hundreds and hundreds of theaters all over America was five and a half months from start to finish. And most of it was recorded, as you'll see in the movie, when everybody came back and you were overseas preaching when the guys came back for New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. Because up until that point, Pagani and Signorelli hadn't even been interviewed like mm -hmm. you and the other guys had. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, we literally had just a couple of months at that point. And so our crew worked literally around the clock. And uh, I had very little to do with it other than, oh, that looks great. Let's do this. You know, watching the screeners and promoting it online. Literally five and a half months start to finish. And God did the whole thing. And now look That's how cool. many people are being delivered. Tens of thousands of people. 80,000 people. We had the number one attended per screening movie in America this past Monday night. It's unheard of. 
and then you also mentioned that also the song the songs from that movie by the way songs are incredible yes. like oh, they, absolutely. they get stuck in your head like those especially that, those country country songs and i was looking for them <laughs> and now that they're i mean yesterday i had as i was preparing for different things i had that that album playing the whole day yeah and so and it's really hit right now what number one yeah, it's number one on the Christian charts, and I think just hit number six uh, worldwide in all genres. I'm like, this is crazy. This is incredible. <laughs> you mentioned also you've highlighted quite a few testimonies um, in a group text message. Could you give us some of the fresh testimonies that, that impacted you the most, something that stands out to you from the Monday night, which was two days ago? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I actually had a Baptist pastor friend of mine reach out, and he said he was fully convinced uh, after seeing what he saw, he was in North Carolina, I believe, but after seeing what he saw, he was just like, man, I can't put that back in the box. I'm going to come for mass deliverance. We had people in the theater here in town, the, the one where we did the red carpet event, they weren't originally going to do it, but they actually saw, oh, there's probably profit in this. And so we filled up two theaters, the two biggest ones. And so we had 600 people buy tickets here, but they didn't show the live in our community. Uh, they did, you know, in all the other Nashville areas, but not here. But the management actually came to me right towards the end of the movie, right when you're talking about David and Goliath and the devil getting some shame and all of that. They actually came to me and said, you will not be speaking, you will not be praying, and you will leave immediately at our theater. And they came to me twice. They actually said, get all of these people out of here. You can't do it in the parking lot. You cannot do this in the lobby. We'll call the authorities on you. And we had to actually leave the theater, and people were standing in line to be prayed for, and they all went back to the tent with us 10 o'clock at night, and we did deliverance in a cold tent that night. And so our town wouldn't even let us do it, right? Jesus said a prophet's not without honor, but his own country. In the very town I grew up in, they didn't even want to show it. They were forced to, I think. And now it's doubtful they'll even re-show it. But I find it interesting that it doesn't make any difference. We are probably the most polarizing church in this area. But there's a lot of people that love us. And that movie gave people a different side to Pastor Greg Locke. It took yes. away the jerk for Jesus that they have assumed that I always am. And it gave them an understanding, wow, this guy's trying to walk in knowledge mm -hmm. and humility. <laughs> I see you laugh about that. And, you know, I've actually had quite I, a few, I've, that I've many, had many people times, tweet right? that. I've had people tweet that yeah. they're like, wow, I, I didn't I didn't think that uh, Pastor Greg had that in him. <laughs> he was, he's actually <laughs> nice. He's, I could, because uh, no, I think, I really and, and, to be a nice and you guy. mentioned that, you mentioned that deliverance really softens you as well. Yes. I mean, I think that God had to use somebody like you because, um, um, it takes it takes a spine and it takes a lot of you have to be able to take a lot of beating and still yeah. persevere in order to persevere in the ministry of deliverance showing you know showing clips of deliverance talking about it is such a controversial polarizing topic in the United yeah. States and the fact that you've always it's almost like that's all you've known and that's you thrive yeah. in that and so it's like the <laughs> Lord really chose you for such a time as this and some of us Amen. I mean we've took the beatings but at the same time we don't have that massive national platform sure. and so to be able to see that you break the wind in this area on yeah. the national level and we can honestly also ride that wave alongside with you it's been so refreshing yeah. it's been so encouraging i mean our whole team we're also you know we've been doing this for about seven years behind the scenes we've yeah. got a lot of criticism but we got used to that it's one of those things yeah. that the ministry of deliverance taught me and then now seeing it seeing the criticism comes from you know Twitter, YouTube and other stuff. I mean, all of that is nothing compared to the stuff we've endured in the earlier days when yeah. we did not have any influence. And so we would hold on to these testimonies of cancers, leukemia, uh, sleep disorders, uh, mental illnesses yes. being healed because of deliverance. And we would stick with the scriptures and with testimonies and kind of shut off all other voices. But now it's coming to the mm -hmm. main line, you know, big screens. I mean, we had a guy, Greg, a guy named Israel, 16 year old kid just started to come to our church recently. I saw him last Sunday. So we went to the Herm, uh, to the Walla Walla, which is about an hour from here. And so I saw his family there in the, in the lobby. So I started to interact with them and they're like, yeah, we've been just recently coming to church and we're glad to be here at the movie. And so after the movie, there were two theaters. So I was in the smaller one because I bought the tickets mm -hmm. earlier. And then the rest of the people were in the bigger one. And so, um, and I've, had our team kind of send me the videos as well of what's happening in the bigger one. And so one of the people that was manifesting and being delivered was actually this boy, teenager. And so his both mom and dad were in the lobby afterwards. And so I asked them like, hey, so how did, how did you like the movie? And the parents were like, ask him. 
So I'm asking the teenager, he's very <laughs> shy, and he's like, I got delivered. And I said, oh, really? Awesome. So tell me more about it. Because I'm thinking, you know, maybe he just like yawned or like something left him. Yeah. He's like, oh no, full blown, screaming, yelling, wow. uh, puking, throwing up. And I was like, you? And he's very shy. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I dabbled in the occult. And he's like, the moment Pastor Greg start talking about renouncing the occult, I start feeling uneasy. I start throwing up, puking. And so I asked him how he feels. Wow. I'm like, do you need any more prayer? He's like, no, everything left. I'm completely free. The mom was like, I also got delivered because I was involved in some of the witchcraft stuff as well. And so seeing that is so, honestly, like I left home myself. I mean, we see those testimonies with the outsiders, yes. but seeing somebody who's actually from our own church who went there, who yeah. just recently started to come and experienced uh, deliverance, it was so incredible and so refreshing. And I'm so mm. grateful for your ministry and I'm so grateful that you said yes. Quite a few pastors actually reached out to me and said, hey, how can I get those prayer points that Pastor yeah. Greg used? Now, do you have a deliverance handbook which people can download mm -hmm. on your website? Are those prayer points and are those prayer um, things that you have went through, are they in that book? They are. We're actually in the process. We're They can download it for free. We'll also send them some for free. I'm kind of restructuring some stuff. I mean, you know, we're a year and a half in now and so I've reworded some things that I've, I've found that's much more successful, mm -hmm. much more powerful against, you know, evil spirits. And so we, we'll get people whatever materials they want for free. But it, for now, some of the things that I read, which of course I only used four or five of them in the film because I, I didn't have two full hours to be able to do that live. And so, yeah, they can go to lockmedia.org and they can just find the, uh, the delivery. We're dropping handbook. that link in the comment and we will have that below video uh, as well. Uh, Pastor Greg, will, when is the next showing of this movie? Uh, April 10 and 11, which unbelievably is the day, the two days after Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> and so, you know, the biggest thing in evangelical history and all the churches, so promote it. And uh, we're trying to get uh, maybe another trailer, a smaller trailer kind of by that time to like, kind of let people know what's kind of going on. But I, I'm telling you, there is nothing that I'm going to be shocked about at this point. God blew my mind this past Monday night. And so the ticket sales are already right now going through the roof. So everybody that saw it, you know what to expect. Go back, see it, take somebody with you and just lead them through deliverance at the end of the movie and watch what the Lord's going to do. So it's April 10th and 11th. Uh, don't quote me on this, but a lot of times when they do an encore or a re-release, if it keeps selling, they'll keep showing. But there are a lot, like for example, an hour from here, there's a theater that both days has five showings already. Uh -huh. And so there's gonna be multiple locations, multiple cities and multiple times mm -hmm. uh, for people to be able to see it. So April 10 and 11, so it'll be here for you know it. Is it only playing um, in the United States or it's playing in other countries? We are praying and we are also working with kind of a third distribution and we don't know all of the inner workings, but we are trying to get it right now in Canada, UK, uh, South Africa, so uh, Prophet Leon's folks can see it, and Australia. So basically, you know, English-speaking countries for the most part. We'll see where it goes with that. And then, you know, I would love to be able to have one Spanish subtitles. Who knows? We have people mm -hmm. asking for all kind of stuff. And then once we get through that time, they own the rights to it for a little bit, and mm -hmm. then we'll figure out a streaming service. It'll definitely go to a streaming service, you know, Prime, Netflix, PureFlix, whatever, and we'll just see where it goes from there. Yeah, and that's knows, what I was actually wanting to ask. I might hook us ask. all back up, and we'll do a We'll do a part two. Who knows? <laughs> you just answered two of my questions. Will it be on DVD <laughs> and will there be part two? <laughs> you just answered all of them. <laughs> well, one more question I have is that, so this Netflix uh, uh, series that's coming out, is it a series or a movie that's coming out about deliverance and exorcism? It's a, it's not a, I don't think it's a whole series. It's kind of a one and done. I think it's a 90, not quite 90, maybe a 75 minute type thing. It's called uh, Exorcism in America, Did the Devil Make Me Do It? Now, it's a very edgy trailer. It, it comes way more like an exorcist movie. And so it's me and Henry Schaefer. We're kind of the evangelicals that are involved. And then a, uh, a, a Pope ordained Catholic exorcist is the other guy. And then the guy that leads the satanic temple. And oh, so wow. they're getting these different aspects. So they're coming from Satanism to Catholicism, exorcism over to the evangelical side and kind of giving the whole roundabout. And then I'll come in at the end and, and get to give the gospel to finish mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. So it's more of like Netflix trying to give everybody a little piece of 
uh, share yeah. everybody's it's opinion. It's a little more edgy. It's definitely yeah. a lot more edgy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But definitely the Come Out in Jesus Name is the movie that you want to bring your friends, you want to bring your family yes. um, into. And so, um, Pastor Greg, thank you so much for all the work that you've been doing. Thank you so much for the Sorry. pioneering and exposing the ministry of deliverance on a larger platform. And thank you so much for not only um, creating the documentary because you know it would have been enough to do a documentary but that thing at the end yeah. I think you know people mm. were left impressed blessed and encouraged yeah. but it's that ministry that 30 minutes of going through I mean yeah. layer by layer unforgiveness witchcraft and experiencing yeah. the power of the Lord moving I don't think that American movie theaters have ever seen anything like that. I no. know that movie theaters are places where people get <laughs> demons usually. So yeah. it's not a place yeah. where you get rid of them. <laughs> where you can cast them out. I said last night on an interview and, uh, and I'll close with this. Look, when the Holy Spirit gets kicked out of church, He goes to the movies and gets people stirred up. And so there is no limitation with God, I'm telling you. Come on, come on. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Greg. I know you have, you have many uh, other things to do. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Uh -huh. God bless you. Guys, um, I know that this was a great blessing. This was a great blessing to you. Drop number one in the chat. If you watched the movie, let me know in the comments below as well. We're going to get ready right now to bring uh, some testimonies of people who went into the movie theater and experienced deliverance. And so um, Everett, if you can help to um, pin me and also another person and get us ready. And the moment we are ready with that, we will bring some other people on the live stream as well. Um, get your tickets for the movie um, come out in Jesus name dot com uh, for April 10th and 11th and we are going to um, see the power of God move mightily and the Holy Spirit do incredible amazing things in the movie theaters once again um, April 10th and 11th and so um, get your tickets uh, today make sure that you get your family uh, sign up and get your um, friends neighbors your church and other people um, uh, do that um, Everett you can randomly bring other people on um, and so yeah um, guys if this was a blessing to you um, if you were encouraged if you were touched by a movie if you experienced deliverance from a movie we're gonna stay for a little bit longer on the live stream and bring some people into the stream who are um, who are going to share can we bring Jennifer Jennifer is the one that messaged on Instagram actually um, uh, so uh, Jennifer um, we're going to bring uh, myself and um, go ahead uh, Jennifer let's let's pin you also to the um, Jennifer hello hello how Hi. are you how are you <laughs> I'm so good Pastor Glenn thank you so much for giving me a quick second I'll I'll be real brief so that everyone has some time here uh, I just wanted to quickly say that um, one really quick thing is, I don't know if anyone else noticed in the theaters, but the preview that showed before the movie was a demonic preview, and it was so funny to me. It was literally about a movie where I possesses a guy like the one, the one preview they showed. But I just thought it was so funny that Satan was like, you know, trying. And uh, anyway, <laughs> quickly, I'll just say I live here in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. I went by myself on Monday night to go see this movie. And during the deliverance portion, everything, um, you know, people started speaking in tongues, breaking out in tongues, um, praying over others. I heard a um, couple people crying out. A lady in the front started to wail and scream and people laid hands on her. And then to my surprise, um, halfway through the prayer, um, he said, Spirit of Santeria, come out. And I, as everyone here, I'm sure feels the same way. I don't know what came, what happened. I just screamed bloody murder so loud. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> and um, before I knew it, I just hit the floor somehow. And um, I just, I just recall, I, I couldn't breathe. I was crying so hard I just was screaming and I recall kind of holding on to the back of the movie theater chair just falling apart on the floor and wow. la next thing I know I'm surrounded by strangers putting their 
her hands on my head and back just praying for me, which to me was like the most incredible thing I've ever experienced. And, wow. and so after a few moments, they prayed over me and I felt it lift and I was able to catch my breath and breathe. But, but the big takeaway I got from that was I understood in that moment, like I felt God's love through the people. The fact that you're at your most vulnerable, uh, you know, mm -hmm. can't see, can't breathe, snot running down your face, and these strangers are surrounding you, loving on you, and it clicked in me that moment, like, this is deliverance, the ministry of love, like, I, I just couldn't wait to come to in my body to have enough strength to just say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I wanted to say thank you so um so wow. badly but i couldn't i couldn't talk but afterward i was set free and everyone hugged me and we cheered and thanked jesus and i was able to get a phone number of one of the girls which i thought was the hugest blessing in this as well with this movie theater mm -hmm. is it's bringing people together in their local area to discover and i asked her what church do you go to do they do deliverance and she said yes so I can't wait to go to her church now and just all of us meeting and finding mm -hmm. each other in our local cities is I think wow. the biggest blessing I'm, I'm also taking away from that. Wow, wow. Thank you, Jennifer, for sharing that so much. I mean, guys, those of you who are going, going to movie theaters, um, I want you to keep this in mind. This is not just about uh, the power of God hitting people and touching people. This is about the love of God touching people people through us and so as Jennifer shared people seeing that we're not just going in there drinking our coke and you know getting popcorn and just having a good time taking a selfie but when people are manifesting when people are manifesting demons when they're going through that they need to be surrounded with God's love and God's mercy because ministry of deliverance is really that ministry it's the ministry of compassion it's the ministry of healing it's the ministry of freedom and it's the ministry of love uh, for people and so this is incredible and how you feel Jennifer how do you feel now I feel so great. I told my husband he's going to go April 10th now. He's going to come to the next showing. I said, I feel light. And um, I know that was like a witchcraft spirit. And mm -hmm. I feel um, this sense of no fear. Like mm -hmm. I had this hindrance and this kind of fear. out, And I just don't feel afraid now. Like I'm just, I'm just happy and light and I feel great. Come on, come on. Thank, thank you for sharing that, Jennifer. Really appreciate you. Have a wonderful day and then I believe the best is yet to come. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Everett, let's bring also other, um, anybody else who is ready. Um, guys, if we're just bringing, we have about 14 people on Zoom right now who are um, on Zoom and they pretty much, they have testimony of the Lord um, bringing healing deliverance in the movie and so, um, Everett's going to pin somebody, somebody else, whoever is ready. Um, and so let's keep it brief. Whoever is ready, let's um, come on. Um, Kim? Hey, Pat. Um, Kim, hello. If you can unmute yourself. So uh, what, what's your testimony? Hi, yes. So I've been a Christian for over 10 years now holy spirit fills and everything i've even worked in the gifts and stuff but recently the past couple of years i've experienced even more of a deliverance like generational stuff and when i went to the theater i already thought i was free but i went ahead and started saying the prayers anyway and was praying over other just praying for people right there and then um I just, I know that I got delivered from some kind of even more like, cause he went in depth of fear, timid, you know, failure, stuff like that. And I believe in, in heights even probably, I haven't tried that one out yet. <laughs> I was still afraid of that. But anyway, so it just, uh, I feel like I got delivered more from some kind of spirit of fear or something even more. And then I like burped really loud and that was like, you know, I didn't drink anything. So that's kind of my thing through deliverance mm -hmm. and um and then afterwards after the movie i felt like god wanted me to give three different people a word that he told me to give them and i was able to do that even more and i just yeah so i'm so happy for this movie wow. and, so and awesome. kim and what, so what are you from and pin what, uh, 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 kim omaha, where are you from nebraska is ne where omaha nebraska nebraska wow come that's on that's where 
where we seen it. Yep. Amen. Amen. I'm well, not originally from here, but go ahead. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that testimony, uh, Kim. God bless you. Keep walking in your freedom. Thank you. Uh huh. God bless you. And Christine. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I can hear you, but I cannot see you. Um, Um, Christine, uh, where is the Christine? Everett, are you able to pin to pin them? Because I'm not. Um, I only see. Uh, so, uh, Chris. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, Christine, awesome. so speak. Uh -huh. I, Christine here from Illinois. Um, I've been through lots of inner healing because of like trauma and the cult and abuse and. Mm -hmm. On Monday evening during the movie, Alexander started rebuking like incubus, succubus, and like the spiritual spouses stuff. And I got extremely sleepy during that time. Mm. And during that time, there were different like pastors in our theater here in Illinois that were getting delivered. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go over there and assist because I'm getting real tired and things like that. But God had another plan and literally brought me to my knees as I was, I was about to get up. And the Lord delivered me from spiritual spouses with like incubus and succubus and mm -hmm. built up anger and rage from my different abusers. Wow. And what are you from? Uh, Illinois. Ill Illinois. Wow. That's incredible. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> well, I appreciate Thank Thank you for sharing that. Thanks. Thank you. Uh -huh. Anybody else who's there? Uh, Joanne? Joanne Chan, what is your testimony? Yeah. Yes. Hello, Pastor Vlad. Um, I just want to say that I learned about the Holy Spirit from your teachings. So um, thank you so much for your ministry. And I was actually activated in deliverance with from TSNL, Daniel Adams Ministry. So everything you guys are doing. And then, of course, Isaiah's videos. All of you guys have equipped me in some way or another. And so when I went Monday, um, I really enjoyed the movie. And then the 30-minute deliverance session. Mm -hmm. You know, I, uh, we, I was receiving, I was with two of my friends from church and, and we just felt in our spirit that we knew we would probably need to pray for someone because we were familiar with praying for deliverance. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was a lady who, uh, was weeping very strongly. And one of my friends was like, we have to go pray for her. So we went mm -hmm. and, um, I was being led by the Holy spirit to call out certain things and, um, she manifested very strongly. Um, I'm from Miami, Florida, by the way. I, I, I went to a movie theater in Miami. And most of the people were very quiet. And I could tell that there was a few people in the movie theater that maybe weren't have not seen Deliverance um, in, in person. They just saw it in the movie theater. So they got to see it in person. And it was, um, you know, a strong manifestation. And then they all extended. They were a little, you know, surprised by it. But everyone in the theater extended their hands towards us to help us pray. So everyone in the movie theater collectively um, was praying with us as we were, um, mm -hmm. you know, casting out the demons. And at the end, just like um, Pastor Greg Locke and even Jennifer said, and you have mentioned, it's the love. It's the love that you give the person because uh, she had a strong spirit of fear. But the moment we were speaking scriptures of love reminding her of her of the love of god um, for her and speaking her identity on her hugging on her mm -hmm. that's when the spirit broke was when we were pouring love on her and mm -hmm. so it was so powerful and um she was just so thankful and shocked that we would do that for her strangers that she didn't know us and so it was a lot of love and it was so powerful amen 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 well thank you for sharing that really appreciate that you're welcome uh -huh. Um, House of Bethany, uh, Joel and Jennifer adds, uh, share your testimony. What, what happened to you? Hi, God bless you. My name is um, Jennifer Eads and I pastor a, a church with my husband, House Bethany International. We're in Pompano Beach. We took out our whole uh, team to go out to watch the movie on April 10th. Um, we're very um, connected to Deliverance Ministry. We're on the Deliverance Map with Isaiah Zadvar and we love Hungry Generation, Pastor Vlad, so we appreciate what God is doing. We went out we came ready in the spirit. We knew God was going to, you know, move, minister. People were going to manifest and get freedom. And we went out. People were getting delivered from drugs. People were getting delivered from identity issues, from perversion, from lust, um, from addictions. Um, people were getting delivered from witchcraft. God moved so powerfully in that movie and at the end with the renunciations that the presence of God moved into the lobby. 
the presence of God moved into the hallway of the movie theater. We started evangelizing, giving out flyers, presenting the gospel to the people who worked in the theater. Mm -hmm. They stood staring at us in all what was happening. And we were saying, this is the glory of God. The kingdom of God has advanced. The, a prophecy was activated. People were slaying the spirit in the uh, lobby. People were imparted with um, anointing and authority of deliverance and to the point where it created an awe that the people, mm -hmm. other people in the theater had to stop and said, what is going on? What is happening? And we said, this is the kingdom of God. It has gotten close and it's with demonstration of power. And mm -hmm. we want to come back out as a team. We want to bring yeah. our deliverance team, our mm -hmm. ushers, our elders on April 10th and come out because we know there's a work. There's people who will never yeah. enter a church, but they're going to go into the movie theater seeking deliverance. And we have to be the feet and hands of Jesus Christ. So I just glorify God. It was powerful. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. God bless your sister and your church. Um, is there anybody who went to the movie and you experienced deliverance? You experienced deliverance um, in the, so, um, yeah, I want to just kind of hear more from people right now who have went and you yourself have experienced um, deliverance. So um, Aiden Fosco, um, uh, share what happened to you. Hi. Hello. Hello. Can I... So what happened to you? Okay. Um, so I, I, I didn't really know what I was expecting. I was invited from a friend of my church and mm -hmm. I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I... I felt like I had it all under my belt. Like I, I, I had the spiritual tools to mm -hmm. get all the bondage that I've been giving to God for a really long time. And when the movie ended and um, that Pastor Greg started speaking against all of these things, um, uh, something just came over me mm -hmm. and I, bawling. I, I got so red hot and, uh, someone from his ministry came over and laid his hands on me. He anointed me with oil and said, can I pray for you? I said, yes. Um, Raise he, your head. Rest in his he said, mm -hmm. right now I speak against that spirit of abuse uh -huh. and immediately I just clammed up. I didn't, I, it was something took over and wow. a scream came out and I was, I was like clawing at my face and like just, I'd never experienced anything like that. And they just kept calling out one thing after the other spirit of abuse come out, um, spirit of perversion come out, spirit of oppression come out, just everything that I thought was gone and it manifested and it was just coming out. And I feel like a new person. I feel uh -huh. lighter, I feel ready to walk in my anointing. And I, 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 I didn't know that deliverance was real. I, I honestly, I doubted it. And I'm just so grateful to have experienced such a powerful move of God. So good. I'm not, I'm not the same. I never will be. Come on, come on, Aiden. Thank you for sharing. This is so, this is so incredible. And Aiden, where are you from? Which state are you from? I am from uh, Southern Illinois, and I went to the movies in Paducah, Kentucky. Kentucky. Come on, come on. Well, thank, thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else who um, went to the movie theater and you've experienced deliverance? You've experienced deliverance and you would like to share, just raise your hand in the Zoom and I will just uh, bring you on. Um, um, uh, Christy, I think we heard you speaking over there um, <laughs> a little bit when your audio was on. And, and, and Christy, what is, uh, what is your testimony? What happened to you? Um, I'll be brief. I'm from Heflin, Alabama, but I went to Oxford, Alabama Movie Theater, which All is right. not far from here. Okay. And it was me, his daughter, and my sister-in-law. And when at the end of the movie, he was just, you know, pronouncing my hands were up in the air. And when he started talking about, um, have you been like hurt and like physically, mentally abused? And all of a sudden a big bang just came up and I just screamed and I just hit the floor screaming still. And then I started pounding my fist on the floor, screaming, saying, get out of me, get out of me in the name of Jesus. Wow. I belong. I'm a child of God. Leave me alone. Get out. I mean, it was just so powerful and deliverance is so beautiful. Amen. And Amen. it's just like, I'm like, I'm like a new person. Like my eyes, my veil has been lifted. <laughs> So you, and you feel different and right now after the after Monday. Today is Wednesday morning. How do you feel? I feel so 
so good. And my voice is hoarse, Vlad. My voice is hoarse. I scream so loud. My That's daughter crazy. told me, she said she looked, but as soon as I belched a scream, every I was the first one to scream in my theater. Wow. Of course, praise God. He just had a show out on me. <laughs> Sometimes and I just belched so it out. I mean, you can't you can't deny it. You can't mm -mm. deny it. Mm -mm. No, there's, you can't. There's no no, and you can't lie. You can't. Wow, this this is incredible. Thank thank you so much, uh, Christy. Thank you so much for sharing this and embarrassing the devil. Pastor Greg, like all of them, they have really opened my eyes, and I'm so thankful and blessed. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for sharing that, um, Stacy. Um, uh, Stacy, where is Stacy? If you can unmute yourself, Stacy, go ahead. Uh, share your what happened to you. Hey, Pastor Vlad. Um, I actually attend. Pastor Locke's church, and I've been to multiple deliverances, and I'm certified by Pastor Henry. Um, so I had grabbed some bronchitis a couple weeks ago. So during okay. the whole movie, before the renunciations, mm -hmm. I hadn't been coughing for weeks before, but I started coughing. So I knew it was coming out of me. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a you know a big manifester at all like that. Mm -hmm. But what I wanted to tell you is that um, after the deliver, I did that. You know there was um last night i did a deliverance on a woman because i do deliverance mm -hmm. and um she was delivered of many spirits um the anointing just keeps getting stronger as i go through deliverance you know i, I can just hammer down on those demons so she was delivered from confusion darts that were hitting her in her head migraine in her sinuses um there was a religious spirit in her diaphragm mm -hmm. And I just want to say that my husband's back was also healed while you were preaching at Pastor Locke's one night. You were just preaching. You weren't uh -huh. doing a deliverance. You were just doing that fire preaching mm -hmm. the night you and Isaiah were there. And you guys, I just think it was your. I think it was your husband that messaged, commented on one of the videos. How many years has he had the problem with his, uh, with his oh, back? I mean, a long time. Like before I even knew him. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, I remember somebody mentioned, mention, I mean, I remember a lot of testimonies, but one of them just really stood out. And, and mm -hmm. the person said that when I was with Isaiah at the event that uh, they were okay. healed um, of, a, of a problem for a very long time. But but this is awesome. Uh, praise God. I really appreciate uh, Stacy Lee uh, for allowing the Lord to use you and delivering others and opening yourself up to the deliverance power of the Holy Spirit. So we appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you guys. Uh -huh. Love y'all. Uh huh. God bless you. And then we'll we'll bring one more person. And I see uh, Brian Brian Davis and your wife is uh, been here. Um, and so let us know where where you guys are from and what did the Lord do through you or for you in the movie. We're uh, out in Las Vegas, the uh, perpetual channel of sin, and. Um, the uh, halfway through the movie, uh, the crowd was attacked by uh, somebody was possessed or something. Came and grabbed the trash can and threw it up into the crowd, um, really? hurt some kid's arm. Uh, but uh, you know, the spirit of God would not uh, let people not be set free. Um, so wait, wait, a, wait, wait. So uh, you're you're saying that throughout uh, halfway through the movie, somebody who was demon possessed actually started to violently attack other people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They uh, they came in and looked at the crowd a few times and we saw them over there and then they grabbed the very heavy trash can lid. It was a giant thing and threw it up into the crowd and um, it, it was definitely a demonic attack. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, people were kind of upset about that, but uh, it settled down. People started singing worship music. Um, there was there happened to be a pastor that did, wasn't going to go, but somebody told him to go. He was from Africa. He has a ministry out there in deliverance, mm -hmm. completely different than it is here. You know, you're familiar with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, d deliverance broke out. They, they turned the volume down on the on the movie to where you could hardly hear it. But you know, by that time, people were just just violently coming out. We had one kid that came out uh, that got delivered six men were trying to restrain this kid he had the demon of rage come off of him it was it was crazy just crazy and it went for hours after the movie was over really uh, just just amazing there's six theaters across las vegas and a few of them broke out in deliverance and we happen to be at this one and uh we've been wanting to start deliverance out here and made some connections to start to uh 
get a team together for mass deliverance out here and uh things things are just 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 moving forward so praise the lord you know and, have you ever uh, seen anything like that i have uh we went to greg Locke's church uh -huh. and we got deliverance for ourselves we were there for two weeks we went back twice so we're we're familiar with it now mm -hmm. and uh we didn't expect this this type of thing to happen at a movie theater mm -hmm. but uh, wow wow man <laughs> And uh, nationwide, you know, it's it's a big shift. It's a big shift. God's definitely doing something with the deliverance ministry, and uh, wow. it. I my hope is that the whole country, and especially the government, can do it, get delivered. Mary Todd opened up a gateway over the White House years ago, and all that witchcraft killed her husband. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Booth was possessed when he killed Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And uh, my hope mm -hmm. is that this keeps going and we can push back the darkness, close those portals and set the whole country free. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. Amen. I stand in the gap with you. Thank you, Brian and your wife. Appreciate you guys. God bless you. God bless you. Um, we'll just, uh, guys, thank you so much for um, coming out. Um, all of you who have shared um, your story, we really appreciate you guys. And um, the best is yet to come. Uh, let's go on April 10th and 11th and see more people be touched by Jesus and more people be impacted uh, by the Lord. As you guys have heard um, these testimonies and so we're gonna uh, stop with the Zoom testimonies for now. There's still more people there but uh, we can probably be here till tomorrow morning listening to everybody's wonderful experience and it's life-changing, it's um, encouraging and it's motivating. Uh, for those of you who went to see the movie and you live in the States, um, go again let's get those tickets let's bring our friends let's bring our family members to the movie theaters on april 10th and 11th and let's see people's lives being changed also um be praying for that uh, night for those two nights that the lord is going to move powerfully uh, we're going to be doing a special fast as well um, if you are tuning in right now uh, we have a fasting challenge group where once a month we do a three-day fast and the next one will be in, in april actually i think four through six so the first monday tuesday wednesday and one of those things that we're going to be fasting is for that weekend that easter services that there will be deliverances breaking out and for the coming out of the movie that more people will experience deliverance that it will hit even in a greater ex greater way more people will experience healing and the demons will come out this is our moment this is our time so i just wanted to encourage you to sign up for that uh, fasting challenge part of our team we also have a group where we memorize scriptures every week two verses every single week because we don't just want people to experience deliverance we want people to experience discipleship from deliverance to dominion and the link from deliverance to dominion is discipleship so discipleship is what links deliverance with dominion and part of discipleship is you know being planted in the local church it's serving God it's being in the ministry it's memorizing the scriptures, it's praying, it's fasting, it's evangelizing, it's making disciples, it's healing the sick, driving out demons. That's, that's all part of discipleship. And so uh, as you're walking in that obedience to the Lord, you will begin to walk in dominion. And so um, check out uh, my Bible memory group and sign up. It's free of charge. You don't, it costs you nothing. Uh, but our goal is to just build that tribe of people that are becoming an army. Same thing with fasting. You know, there is no cost to it except the only cost is that you go hungry um, for the purpose of pursuing the Lord. Not hungry for the purpose of losing weight, not hungry for the purpose of trying to become better than other Christians, but hungry for the sake of getting your hunger back for the Lord, getting more humble before the Lord, and then really pressing in uh, for the Lord. Um, the last thing that I want to highlight is um, if you want to learn more about deliverance, if you want to learn more about dominion, fasting, we do have books. You can download them free of charge on my website. I do have e-courses as well. You can get them for your small group, for your church. Um, they're also free of charge on my website. All of that is in the comments below. If this ministry was a blessing to you, consider becoming a partner uh, with us. Uh, we're able to give courses, books and all of this stuff free of charge to different nations. We, trans we translate our books into many languages and offer them free of charge. I'm actually going to Philippines in a few months from now. We're going to be having about 33,000 people coming through in five days 
33 different thousands of people coming in through five days of deliverance, prayer for healing. And so really excited for what the Lord is going to do in that nation. And so um, you partnering with us helps us to take the gospel not only the gospel of salvation but also the good news of deliverance and healing to the nations of the world. Romanian language, um, Armenian language, we're translating content into Par uh, uh, French language, Spanish language, um, Portuguese and so many, so many um, other languages. Even right now, this week, we found a person who will be translating it into Chinese. And so the deliverance content. So I'm really, really excited. I mean, this is just the beginning of the Lord just sparking revivals around the world uh, through uh, people like us, simple, humble. Um, okay, maybe saying that I'm humble is kind of maybe not, not a good thing to do. But small people, what I mean is small people that the Lord uses for His glory and He accomplishes His purposes. Amen. I know some of you were asking where can we get, um, where can we get the um, songs, the deliverance songs. So we're going to drop that in the chat right now as well where you can download the book, not the book, you can download the album of deliverance songs that I was referring to uh, in the beginning of the broadcast and I believe it's going to be a great blessing to you. Next Wednesday I'm going to bring on, on the live stream a lady whose testimony, honestly I would say probably the most radical and crazy testimony I have ever heard unforgiveness. She was buried alive for 14 hours with the rest of her family members. The only reason they buried her alive because people ran out of bullets to kill her and she was just a kid. So she was just a child uh, buried alive with her dead family members and then they discovered her some 14 hours later as they came to give proper burial for the family members and discovered that she was alive. And so she's a genocide survivor and how she came to know Christ, how she experienced physical healing and deliverance from unforgiveness and then how God is using her now to touch the world. And so it's going to be powerful because unforgiveness is one of the strongest open doors for people to stay in demonization. And so I believe that there is healing that's going to be released from trauma, healing that's going to be released from abuse, as people hear that testimony and the Lord's going to move powerfully. So don't forget to um, just kind of be on the lookout for that uh, live stream that's going to happen next Wednesday at 9 o'clock. So thank you every person who's giving, who's praying and for staying connected. Don't forget, get your tickets for April 10th and 11th, even if you watch the movie. But now you can go as you we've heard on Zoom and we've heard people sharing that they went not only to support the movie, but they also went to pray for other people. Because the moment deliverances break out, somebody who knows about deliverance needs to be the first person to go there and start praying for those people. And so God's going to use you. So don't think about it it's like, oh, I'm just going to go for myself. You went for yourself on Monday. Now on April 10th and 11th, you go for somebody else's freedom. Maybe your church doesn't do deliverance, hey, God is bringing deliverance to a movie theater. And so maybe um, you, you've never prayed for deliverance. You go there in the movie theater and you go with the love of God. You don't go there so you can get some recordings. The goal isn't to get recording. The goal is to show the compassion and the love of Jesus Christ for other people to experience that who have never experienced that. And actually get their phone number and connect with them afterwards and say, how are you doing? How are you feeling after your deliverance? And so that people can be encouraged and people can be blessed. Amen. Thank you guys so much for um, joining us live and we will see you again next time.